<clears throat> what's going on everybody here to give you guys your review for Married to Medicine and I am so sorry and I write down the season the episode or the title I apologize <clears throat> and the reason that was is like I woke up this morning uh, getting ready because I had class today and I pretty much like I watched it took uh, as detailed notes as possible but I knew I wouldn't have a whole lot of time to record the video do everything else so I like dashed out came back <laughs> just literally finished recording uh my tablet is trending top of the t which is either going to be up later on today for you all or tomorrow either or i don't know but because i'm doing things differently i'm actually putting time into editing the videos so that one is actually going to take a little bit more time that's not just a real quick do a little sum sum with this and because i'm using camtasia and not uh i moving <clears throat> All the different things you guys are going to see in that particular video or video, so I'm probably going to chop it up. It takes time and actually is very manual and it's not like other uh, software applications to where you can just sit here drag move shit. Like this is where like literally everything that you all are seeing, like I'm having like hand program that shit. So that's kind of why I'm a little bit off. <laughs> and if I appear to be a little bit lit, it's because... I've been drinking, doing the other video. Y'all know I drink what I do when tap was trending top. It's with tea. So, this is the last of the glue vine that I have from this particular bottle. It's not the last that I have. I have more. <laughs> it's just the last from that bottle. So, I'm going to try to make this last through the video. If not, fuck it. I'm not going to grab another fucking bottle. But, we'll get through this. And we're going to talk. We're going to have a good time. All right? So my question to all of you, question of the day in reference to this episode and last episode, do you think Dr. Heavenly is putting 20 on 10? And honestly, I have to say yes and no. Um, I say yes because, you know, I do think that things are being dragged out. Because doctors, and I'll talk about this later, but Dr. Simone apologized twice when they were in New Orleans. So, <clears throat> actually, I'll say last episode and episode before. I think it actually happened two episodes ago, but I'll say between two episodes and now. But Dr. Simone did apologize. Dr. Simone be on some fuck shit. She be on some fuck shit lately. But, <clears throat> she apologized twice already. Alright. But at the same exact time, I'm going to say no because you know from where i stand and i believe this whole harley you especially if you are if you're on the outside looking in or you're the person that hurts somebody you cannot tell somebody how to feel you cannot evaluate the feelings and you cannot sit here and tell someone when to get over something because just because it does seem big to you doesn't mean it's not that big to somebody else because you could be going through something that is massive you know to the majority of people but to somebody else that ain't shit so it is what it is. And I and I do understand what Heavily is going through with her uh, spiritual walk in general. In general. Because the whole reason of me converting to Judaism was because of my spiritual walk that started when I was pretty much 13 years old. Like that catapulted everything. And I'm 31 now. So anybody trying to sit here and say anything, I mean you can say whatever. But I know what I've been through. I know where my walk has taken me. I'm not perfect. But as she said, my spirit is perfect. But this flesh, nowhere close to. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get into this video. Mm -hmm. Dr. Simone, uh, she checks on, uh, she has a patient. It happens to be a small person. And if y'all, and someone who has a uh, dwarfism. Uh, with a small person, she's never had any, uh, I guess, female checkups. Again, I don't know of all the intricate parts for obvious fucking reasons. But um, she uh, kicks out the mother and she's very warming. She's very close. Uh, she's not condescending. And it is beautiful. And I, I kid you not, it is so beautiful to see Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie when they interact with their patients. <clears throat> because you can tell that this is not just a job for them like they actually have a passion for being doctors and they actually care so 
I respect that wholeheartedly. It is always a great scene to see in general because this is married to medicine. So, of course, we see their interactions with their particular spouses and all the doctors are female, so with their husbands. But it's also nice to see them doing their jobs and the fulfillment they get from it. So that is that's a beautiful thing. But I will say that the warmth that she has with her patients, <clears throat> I would really love for her to bring that home to Cecil. Now, Cecil, bro, we going to talk in a minute because you, you, you did some fuck shit. So I'm just like, Lord, have mercy. But we'll get there. <clears throat> so you have Mariah talking to her mother, Lucy. I'm not going to go too much into it only because like I know a lot of people have made comments about her live that she did. But to put that into context, I do like Mariah, but I'm not standing for her. But the live happened after last week's episode. It wasn't necessarily right after the shoot. So I'm pretty sure there's more that happened between it. But from what I see, Mariah is not necessarily saying a whole lot of craziness. It's her mother and sister. Her sister wasn't on this episode. But this could be one of those like Candy Burris things where Candy doesn't say a whole lot. But she puts out vibes and those around her will say the thing so Candy can look good in a certain light. I don't know. Speculating. Putting it out there. Let me know how you feel. At the same exact time, you have uh, Dr. Heavily with Quad. Because like I said, Mariah with her mother are rehashing things. And we also see them doing the same exact thing. And, you know, you have Dr. Heavily talking about some that the, cra the party was crazy. Because, you know, you got people killing insects, more or less when Mariah accidentally stepped on the butterfly. Saying they ain't got no brown liquor, which is for perpetuating that, you know, African Americans, black folk, like brown liquor. I'm not saying I don't. <laughs> but I was, I, I'm putting it on myself for a second. I, I, I you know, I, I, I grew up drinking, you know, drinking that yak. I, I drink that yak. Shit. But actually, to be honest, I'm... Uh, most of the men in my family actually drink vodka more than anything and they and they tend to buy kettle one and Ciroc like those are the two vodkas that they buy but again you know like my granddaddy my granddaddy drank that brown <laughs> that brown liquor and I drink uh, Long Island's which you can make them any kind of way but I tend to go for the darker liquors to help it look a little bit more like tea so when all the mix and everything comes together it actually looks a certain way but you know, I would drink. Uh, I would drink that. I drink that yak, and then you know, I had to be all uppity and uh, bougie, you know, bougie. So I would uh, drink a uh, Remy because you know I need that cognac champagne, you know, because you know bougie. <laughs> but I shit you not. And then you know, even going to like a party and whatnot, like to have Remy Martin. That, like I went to one fucking party. That shit was like like a party, but like a to an establishment. That shit was ten dollars. I looked there like y'all got me and the game fucked up. I'm not gonna pay ten dollars for shit. Okay, all right. Because if I buy you know three or four of these drinks, I could have bought the whole fucking bottle. Miss me. Okay. So we have um Contessa and Renee. And you have Contessa talking about the whole um, of, of Renee, of, you know, the jealousy that she feels, <clears throat> also pairing that with the liquor, and, you know, just kind of that whole inadequacy. And it's just like, <clears throat> even though people may ha necessarily have stature and everything else, that, that, that has absolutely no impact on the person that you are. Because <clears throat> shit for what the fuck I do for a living. I say it all the time. Like you have people that have more stature and everything else than me, but shit between me and another motherfucking dude, we put our fucking pants on one leg at a time unless they wanna be, you know, all about it and wanna jump in two legs further. Other than that, <clears throat> ain't shit, you know, literally different between me and the next fucking dude. So with that being said, if you feel that, you know, titles and materialistic things, like if you feel like that is what makes you a man and all this other shit. Or makes you that person. It is the fuck it is. But just know that uh, I know who the fuck I am. I have the confidence in everything else about myself. And there's nothing that you can say or do that's going to make me think less than myself. So, But <clears throat> Contessa wants to have a 90s party. Which I think probably for my 40th birthday party I'm probably going to do that. Actually probably my 41st or 42nd. Because I'll be done with this profession. 
somewhere around there. Because I was, at, like I said, I was born in 1986, so like my life actually played out in the 90s. So if I was to ever throw a party, a true, true party would actually be like a 2000s, between 2010 and 2010 party, because like that's actually like when I like lived. <clears throat> but I was born in the fucking 90s. Well, I would, love, I would love to do something like that, but that's what she wants to do. And, um, Contessa, she tries to work with a party planner, but you have Renee chopping her off at the knees. Now, the whole purpose of this is, is more or less because she's trying to help, you know, Renee look a little bit better to the fucking women. And I went up for Renee, uh, <laughs> last episode only because, like, Renee's from Chicago. I'm from Chicago, so, you know, I try to stick with my chi -town people, but this particular episode... I, I don't know, not quite there, but, <clears throat> so there's that, um, you have, uh, Jackie and Cur Jackie and Curtis, Lord. This scene <laughs> did not really give me what I needed, but myself and Jackie were two totally different individuals, so, <clears throat> but, <clears throat> Jackie tells him initially, thank you for the gifts, but things don't fix the problem. And she's right. <clears throat> and he says to her, I was thinking about you. There's something because I have a gap here because I, I, I guess I forgot to go back and write the shit down. Sorry. <clears throat> but she said, but one thing that Jackie said, and when I said that shit hit me, she was like, I lost my father. You know, the whole infertility, <clears throat> dealing with breast cancer, this by far is the worst follow. I want to do a quick segue and just a quick PSA. <clears throat> because I've actually been thinking about, um, not necessarily this, but, you know, like, <clears throat> I do a lot of suicide prevention and intervention with my job. I do. <clears throat> and I can talk... Anybody can talk about it, but I talk about it because I was in that place so many years ago. And one thing that I have noticed is, because um, I recently went through a bout of depression <clears throat> with um, having the abdominal spasms and cramps, which I still am dealing with right now, uh, the elbow, the tendonitis in my elbows, which I'm still dealing with. <laughs> But, you know, the whole losing my father, the um, pneumonia, breaking one rib, fracturing two, uh, difficulties breathing, having an asthma attack at the time that I know that I had asthma, almost dying because I didn't know that I had asthma, all of this within a year and a half, two year time frame. I got very, very fucking depressed, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> Mostly because the vices that I have that typically bring me out of a rough place that I wasn't able to do, you know, and all of them involve me talking and all the coughing and everything. Like I said, doing these videos, I can't do these videos because I don't have a voice. I can't sing <laughs> because I don't have a voice because that's something that kind of like takes my mind off of things. And <clears throat> even with all of that, you know, working out was also another thing, but having all of the fucking physical limitations and then having a fractured rib and then, uh, I'm sorry, a broken rib and then a fracture, then another fracture and everything else. And keeping me from actually being able to channel all this energy into something else. And I'm actually still in the process of trying to get back on that. <clears throat> Put me into another depression. And one thing that really helped me out is having to look back and was just like, I've gone through worse. <clears throat> Or I've gone through something similar or maybe not as severe. But at that time in my life, this was a big issue. I was able to come from that. So if I was able, <clears throat> especially at the age of 10, because I dealt with the whole suicidal uh, thoughts and everything from 10 to 13. Three good years of going through that shit. Not really good years, but y'all know what I'm saying. But if I was able to get through that, <clears throat> where every day I was contemplating, you know, madness in my head I know that now especially being in my 30s that no matter what I go through I try to go back to that place and remember if I was able to get through that I it, as a child 
I know as an adult I can get through anything and that pulls me out of a place so what I'm going to say to each and every one of you don't dwell on it <laughs> but go back to the worst thing that has ever happened in your life that you truly was able to come out from even put it down on paper and when you feel yourself slipping into that dark place not necessarily go back to that old place but reminisce on I went through this and if you write down also write down what you like how you came from it and that should be able to pull you back and keep you from going to that real real dark dirty place but what Jackie was saying is I went through these things the pain that I feel for your betrayal has nothing on that and what I hope Jackie can do is look back on those issues figure out what it was that pulled her out of that what helped her persevere and have that same exact thing you know get her through this not saying she need to forget this mother <laughs> but how she can you know navigate through this but back to this um <clears throat> oh when she said uh this doesn't fix things how do you f she also said how do you fix humiliation i got to say that then she had uh, mentioned about how she uh you know um how tough it was losing her father, having breast cancer, and whatnot, and how this is definitely the worst. Now, he says there's probably a lot of things I took for granted with you that I should have, and I'll certainly take blame. So I know it's a lot to think about. <clears throat> I wasn't content, <laughs> only because you're you're literally touching this barely touching the surface because <clears throat> he never once admitted anything that he did he never once said that regardless of what happened i apologize for stepping on this marriage i apologize for having an affair with this young lady i apologize for using your money to fund these excursions i he never did any of that it was just we're gonna pussyfoot around the shit I ain't like that. I didn't. Because it's like, you can sit here <clears throat> and say to her, you know, there's probably a lot of things I took for granted. You think? And, you know, I certainly take the blame. If I was you, I would have been like, no, no, what you take the blame for? Conf say out of your mouth what it is that you did that you feel that was wrong. Because until it comes out of somebody's mouth that this is what I did to wrong you, they're not necessarily that fucking, you know, um, sincere about it. But that's just me. Anyway. <clears throat> Jackie pretty much tells him, I ain't making no promises. You know, we can kick it right here. We ain't finna go out in front of everybody. We not finna sit here, hold hand, pretend like everything okay. There's still shit to work out. So this is where the fuck we at. Right here. We ain't here, but we here. So you got Cecil with Mark and Greg. They're in his boom boom room. I was going to say it was his man cave. But quiet as his kept that whole fucking place is his man cave. <clears throat> and Cecil talks about how he has a business opportunity. Uh, there's an app that is called Business Force. It's pretty much the best way I, if I interpreted everything correctly. Is if you have a job that a child can do. You will post it. List what it is, the duration, how much you're willing to pay, and they can come over. They can do the job and get paid some money. So, and and that's some inventive shit where it's just like, cause I, I mean, I've done shoveling back when I was a child to get some fucking money and having an app like that, like, oh shit, my, uh, this motherfucker down the street need a motherfucker. Bet I'm on it. So, but what he said is that <clears throat> he uh, pulled money out of their account and did not tell his wife. Now, I'm 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 gonna go back in time slightly. For you, Cecil, but I'm a, uh, then we're going to have to have a talk. <clears throat> because let's not pretend like his wife did not go on this trip to, you know, um, I'm about to say Barbados, Louisiana, and did not tell him he had to like walk in on her packing. We're also not going to pretend like she did not go buy a car. And then tell him till she brought the fucking car home. So we're not going to pretend like she ain't did the same exact shit. But at the same exact time, just because she did it, does not necessarily give you the clearance to go and fucking do it yourself. And they even had a clip of them going back and forth. And with all the issues that they have going on in their marriage, that is not the smartest thing to do. Is to sit here and put more shit 
on top of it even if it is your money and if they're going through this where well it's my money i can they might want to go ahead and have separate accounts and have a joint account not necessarily ideal but see so you were dead ass fucking wrong and <clears throat> regardless of there's no way that you can justify what it is that you did especially if you don't have your own account yes your wife has done the two things that i've mentioned but that still does not necessarily give you clearance to do what it is that you did. And for anybody that wants to sit here and go in on Cecil for that, but you went up for quad buying that car because her husband did it, it's the same exact fucking thing. So we're not going to sit here and raise up one and bring down the other. We're not going to do that. We're not. Moving on. <clears throat> uh, and I'm out of my drink. All right, let me, let me try to speed through this because I'm so upset. All right, um... <clears throat> And you have uh, Greg pretty much talking about how he responds to Quad. And in the conversation of him talking and even listening to Cecil, it seems like he has an insight that he did not have once before. And we even see on the upcoming episode that uh, Greg and Quad are going to have a heart to heart. So maybe just maybe this is what the, uh, the doctor ordered to kind of help those two get back on a better, um, <clears throat> better, um, better sheet of paper. <laughs> I was going for some of this, but I can't think of it. Um, you have Simone and Jackie. Jane got her lookbook photos back. They talk about Curtis. That's it. Um, Contessa. So she's getting ready for the '90s party. She says to Renee, uh, uh, "Either can you or go. It doesn't really matter how what, but go feed the kids while I finish getting ready for everything." Miss Renee felt a kind of way. Snapped at her. Get begins to walk off. Throw something at Contessa, and she. It's like, well, you can fire me. And I think what it is is that not necessarily that Renee is jealous, but I think that she feels inadequate because this party is for you <laughs> to help you look better to these ladies. And the fact that she literally went the fuck off and it didn't appear there was any reason either that or there was something that happened that we didn't know about. Or, of course, there's a lot that's not being said. And when you are not a main cast member and you're not on Love and Hip Hop to where you can share your side of the story. A lot of that falls through the cracks. And it appears that that is probably what happens. So, <clears throat> I don't know what it is. I went up for Renee, Renee last week. And I'm going to have to say that I can't go for it. Like, here's the thing. I'm shot down all day. I, I, I rep to see that I was bred, born, and raised in. But that was very, very, very inappropriate. And, and I do understand that. You know, just because you have stature or whatnot doesn't make you any better than anybody. But when you have a job to do, <clears throat> regardless of how the fuck you feel, you still have a job to do. You still have your employer. And based on how everything was, Contessa did not come off disrespectful. So the only thing that I can possibly think of is maybe, just maybe, um, what's her name? Renee was going through something that day and maybe it boiled over. That's the only thing that I can give her, but that might be the last that we've seen of her. And even um, Miss Ren uh, Doctor uh, Contessa's husband had said to her, "You run this. I it's either was then or next episode, but you run this. You the only queen be up in this motherfucker." It's a '90s party. I ain't finna go too much into it because I'm I'm gonna just get through this shit. Because again, I I need to get this video up and then I need to edit the other video because it's gonna be a lot of shit going on that. But. <clears throat> Toya has an issue with cheap liquor. She's not the only one. But here's the thing. It is a 90s party. And many of them, a lot of the liquor that was there, we not going to act like none of us ain't never drank Kirkwood. I drank Kirkwood. All right? I'm surprised they had no fucking Seagram's there. If I ever threw a 90 party, party we're going to have Seagram there. It's, go it's going to be on display. <clears throat> you feel what I'm saying? Like, that's the shit... You it's funny how motherfuckers get money, and I swear they forget where the fuck they came from. Now, I told you the whole thing, because she was the main one complaining. You know, it's this cheap nigga that's going to that's gonna get you fucked up, but that's the fucking point. You're there to get fucked up. You're there to relive your moments in the fucking 90s. Like, come on now. Anyway. <clears throat> Mariah, um, Kawhi comes in, you know, Mariah speaks to her, and, you know, Mariah wishes her a happy birthday, and I do think Mariah was baiting her, Kawhi sort of kind of to the bait, like, oh, yeah, and your party, I didn't, she should have never mentioned the party, but it's like, that kind of opened up the floodgates for what's going to come in a little bit. <clears throat> you have, um, 
Dr. Simone wanted to talk to Dr. Heavenly. So Dr. Heavenly needed her husband Damon to kind of be her mouthpiece because he's a little bit, he's not even a little, he's more, uh, he can better articulate himself, especially when it comes to trying to be the mouthpiece for his wife. Now Simone also brings Cecil over there. <clears throat> and, you know, even though Damon was speaking up for Dr. Heavenly, like her body language told it all. Like regardless of what he's saying, it's like your body language is something completely different. And Heavenly says to her, like, my spirit is perfect. And I know a lot of people like kind of got upset and just like Heavenly should let it go. And I, I'm not really here for Heavenly, but I can understand she wasn't necessarily upset about the whole voodoo thing. But it's the whole comment of, even though I do agree, but I'm not around them, the whole, if this is what your faith is, you need to walk in it. And Heavenly whole thing is she is trying to get better, though I think it's all for a storyline, but she's trying to get better and to be challenged on that. It hit her in a real soft spot in addition to being exposed to something that is religiously and spiritually outside of what your norm is further added on to it and i mean she kind of let that shit faster a little bit but again you cannot tell somebody when to get over something and you cannot invalidate somebody's fucking feelings and think that shit's gonna ride but <clears throat> heavily says that she doesn't want to hear about this shit again they hug it out we done the girls in general have something to say because about the liquor and even mariah gonna say because she she's tired of hearing the word bougie but for the most part, Donna Contessa was saying bougie, not necessarily in terms of her party versus Mariah's, but like all these bitches are being bougie, like it's a fucking 90s party. Get the fuck over yourself. We're here to have a good fucking time. <clears throat> and she even goes on to tell the toilet, like, look, I got Patrona shit up in the house, okay? If your bougie ass want to take your ass in the house, go ahead and get it. But what's out here is the party. Now, the party wasn't as lit as I would have liked, but you know, I. I don't know. I think I, I think Contessa really wasn't like fully in the moment because this couldn't have been my motherfucking part. Because I would have been like, either you get your ass off the wall, you take your ass home, or you try to be an uppity bitch and the fuck out my damn party. Like we finna drink, we finna be merry, we finna be happy, we finna we finna juke, we finna sit here and do the electric slide, the cha cha slide, the cupid shuffle. We finna do all this motherfucking shit. We better have a good motherfucking time, damn it. That's just me. And I lost my damn place in my damn nose. Hold on, you guys. So Simone talks to Mariah about the whole award thing. It was pretty much letting her know, like, you were being, like, real, real shady about that. And Mariah says no. So then <clears throat> Simone goes and grabs Dr. Heavily, sits her down. And now she wants to talk about this entire thing to people that may or may not have been there. Now, I think this is probably a little deflection type thing where... You know, you have people that go through things in their life and they feel that other people are like looking at them and know what they're going through. So you have people that will not necessarily start shit, but will try to deflect and make somebody else's center of attention to take the attention off of them. And I think that's what she did. And Dr. Simone being a loud motherfucker that she is, like literally blast that spotlight. So now the spotlight is on Mariah and Dr. Heavenly. And you got Quad standing there, be like, ooh, shaded boots, all that stuff now. Quad has every reason to, you know, state her opinion and whatnot. This, that, and third. Quad had even asked Heavenly if she thought that that message was towards her. I can't get mad at her for saying that, but this is one of those where you're inserting yourself into something that does not necessarily, you know, that you're not in and you weren't even there so it appears that you are trying to have a moment let's be clear i do like mariah but mariah was wrong for what she said there at her particular excuse me at her mother's day brunch party thing of a jean <clears throat> but it's one of those where it's just like it appears that you are trying to have a moment and like dr jackie dr jackie be on her fuck shit she has her shady confessionals but Dr. Jackie does not have to necessarily have a moment. If you get what I'm saying. When you con like, when you securing your shit, you don't necessarily have to make a moment out of somebody else's moment. And the funny thing is, it's normally Toy the one that start the shit. But Simone decided that she wants to start it. And her excuse is, oh, I had some tequila shots. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that.
But anyway, um, hmm. Heavenly says to hold on. So Heavenly says that you know uh, talk about what Mariah said. Mariah says. <clears throat> you know, it wasn't about you. It's what my mother did for me and what my husband's mom did for them. Heavily says, you will lie, Mariah's like, you're the biggest liar in here. Heavily's like, your mama, and then she catches herself. And, <clears throat> you know, Mariah's just is looking at David like, you know what, get your wife, get your fucking wife and whatnot. And it's crazy because I kind of felt bad that Dr. Aiden wasn't there to kind of like get his wife under control. Now, Dr. Heavenly whole thing is, my, he ain't got to get me because I'm right fucking here. You come get me that whole fucking thing. Um, and then, you know, she even said, your mom, you know, was the one that hit a bitch in the head or something along those lines. And that sent Mariah off. And then she was like, it wasn't your head, it wasn't your head. And then the shit went off there. So up until this point, the whole episode was fucking <clears throat> uneventful. <laughs> this shit could have came on last Friday, but it did. And that is all that I have. And fuck, I've been talking for 31. Okay, I've been talking for way too long. That's all I got. Rake, subscribe, and share. I'm out. Peace. Holla at y'all later. <laughs>